Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Today we're going to be taking a look at the US M1917. But instead of diving into the original origins of the rifle and its First World War use, today we're going to look at how it was used by the British during World War II. Namely, we're going to look at the home guard use of the rifle itself. These were sent to Britain in the early stages of World War II and many of them were issued out to the home guard. And we believe that this one was as well. Vic picked up this rifle in the early 90s and for the last couple of years I've been enjoying it and it's featured in a couple of range videos here on the channel as well. So without further ado we'll dive into the history of the M1917 in British service. The transfer of rifles began in autumn 1940 with the training pamphlet the Home Guard .300 Rifle P17 American Manufacture published in September by the government. The pamphlet began, it now appears that all home guards will ultimately be equipped with this rifle. In May 1941, the home guards .303 rifles began to be withdrawn and reissued to the regular army. These rifles were steadily replaced by the American M1917s arriving from US stockpiles. This particular rifle was built by Remington in August 1918. By the spring of 1942, 80,000 M1917s had arrived, the first of 500,000 that were to be transferred. These would go some way to arming the over 1 million Home Guard members who needed weapons. The Home Guard was stood up in May 1940, initially known as the Local Defence Volunteers. They were a sort of armed citizen militia, made up of men ineligible for regular military service. They were formed into local platoons, companies and battalions, and were initially poorly armed and equipped, but in time became a well-equipped home defence force. The M1917 has a somewhat complicated origin. Our friends over at Sea and Arsenal have done a good job at explaining this at length, but in summary, the story began with the British Army's pre-World War I attempts to replace the SMLE. The pattern 1913 was developed based on a modified Mauser action and chambered in the new 276 calibre round. Before the P-13 could be fully evaluated and adopted, war was declared, and the British government placed contracts with US manufacturers to produce the pattern 1914. The P-13 adapted to chamber the standard .303 round. Due to a lack of parts interchangeability between the P-14s, made by various manufacturers, the rifle didn't see frontline service. In 1917, the US entered the war and found themselves in need of a large number of rifles quickly. With the P-14's production lines still in place at Winchester, Remington and Eddystone, the decision was made to produce the P-14 chambered in 30 6 and this was adopted as the model 1917. Despite the M1917 being more plentiful in 1918, indeed equipping the majority of their American Expeditionary Force, the US Army opted to retain the M1903 as its primary service rifle. As such, the rifles transferred to Britain in the 1940s had been in storage, often in Cosmoline, for two decades and were in good shape. As the M1917 was chambered in 30 odd 6 or as the British referred to it, .300, the rifles were painted with a red band around the fore-end furniture to prevent the wrong calibre being used with the rifles. The same measure was taken with the various Browning M1917 medium machine guns and M1918 automatic rifles that were also transferred to Britain. Some of the rifles also had .300 stenciled on their butt. Home Guard riflemen were to be issued with 50 rounds of 30 odd 6 each, but in the early stages of the war, the ammunition was extremely limited. While this hindered familiarisation with the rifle somewhat, it didn't hinder rifle training completely, as many home guard units would have practised with 22 rifles on miniature ranges, and with rifles and ammunition provided at regular army ranges. In this clip from some footage of the Warwickshire Home Guard, we see a corporal happily posing with a 22 calibre martini rifle. OK, let's take a closer look at the 1917. Unloaded, the rifle weighs 9.2 pounds, or just under 4.2 kilograms.
It's 46.25 inches or 117 centimeters long and had a fixed internal double stack magazine, which because of the lack of the rim on the 30 odd six could hold six rounds. The 1917 feeds from five round stripper clips and in this footage you can see me loading a clip when I was last at the range with the rifle. As I mentioned earlier, this rifle was manufactured by Remington in August 1918. By the end of production, Remington had produced 545,541 rifles. At peak output, almost 10,000 rifles were being produced per day by the three factories, with the final number of rifles built standing at 1,727,449 rifles. The rifle has an aperture rear battle sight, zeroed for 200 yards, with a peep also mounted on a ladder for longer ranges, giving graduations out to 1600 yards. Unlike the earlier P14, the 1917 dispensed with the volley sights seen on the British rifles. The bolt of course has a dog leg handle which was carried over from the P14 which in turn emulated the SMLE's bolt handle position, falling nicely under the hand. The rifle has a Mauser style bolt release on the right. We can pull back on that and slide the bolt out. The action is cock on close, and the bolt itself is based on the Mauser 1898s. The M1917 is an excellent rifle, and the Home Guard were lucky to have them, while those lucky enough to have received an SMLE may have been disappointed when they were given an American rifle in its place. Many did appreciate the M1917. It was certainly better than the smattering of shotguns, civilian rifles, older service rifles, and the Canadian Ross, which some units found themselves armed with during the Home Guard's early days. One Home Guard unit in Denbyshire, Wales, was initially issued 100 Canadian Ross rifles, between 500 men, until, in the spring of 1941, they began to receive M1917s. One rifle for every two men. Clifford Shaw, a member of the Home Guard who later became an officer with the RAF regiment, recalled in his post-war memoir that the M1917s were really splendid weapons. I never came across a bad one. In certain quarters they were not popular, but that can be primarily and summarily dismissed with one word, ignorance. The higher velocity .300 cartridge gave slightly improved ballistics than the 303 cartridge in the P14, and I should say that the M17 was probably the most accurate rifle I ever used. In this footage of a Warwickshire Home Guard unit, we get a rare glimpse of the men at the range with their M1917s. They're paired up with spotters and instructors, and we also get to see the men in the butts running the targets for the shooters. In the footage we can clearly see the red bands which have been painted on the fore ends of the rifles to denote them as 30 odd 6 rifles. Here we can see the scoring detail sat by the field telephone connected to the butts.
I'm not sure exactly what the range they're shooting at is, but this target, a second class figure target, shows that someone was a good shot. It's fascinating to see the men manning the butts as well, running up the targets, scoring them and patching the holes. In another piece of footage of the same home guard platoon, we see them drilling with their rifles. They're carrying out muscle exercises. The manual for the .300 rifle P17 lays these out. The first practice trained men to lift the butt of the rifle into their shoulder, and how to level the rifle quickly for aiming. The second was to strengthen the grip of the hands, and the third exercise laid down in the manual trained the soldier to hold the rifle steady while aiming, building up strength to increase stability. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video taking a look at the M1917 in Home Guard service. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Sharing the videos with friends really helps support the channel. You can also support us via Patreon and with a one-time donation via coffee.com. Thanks again for watching, see you in the next one.